welcome back to Insomnia True Silver Pog Championship 2. Round number four head. It's about <laughs> to start. I'm here with Sol and Raven. My name is Nimsh. How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm doing good. You, you exerted an Ellie giggle from me there, Nimsh, so well done for that. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a very emo uh, ridden intro from you there, Nimsh. It's good. I, I like tried. It. I tried. Yeah, that, that kind of intro is pretty impressive, and there's actually just no way to follow that up in, in any good way, so I'll. Uh, well, we can always say that the dance game is about to start. I didn't want to steal that from you. You said you were going to say that. Come on. All right. All right. Wow. Pre-recorded? What? What's happening? <laughs> right? <laughs> what happened? Okay. Yeah. So um, this is actually round four, which means that we have a lot of free O's. Yes. But also a lot of O3s. Yep. So um, I'm, I'm really interested to see who is there with the free O. And we can see the standings for the top 20 players at the moment. So we have Nas Penny, Modern Leper, Defsi, two beers. Are you Ignites 6 0 Thais Super JJ with 3 0 Life Coach as well? There's a lot of 3 0s and a yeah, lot of great lot players I recognize. A lot of great names. Cream kind of rising to the surface here. Super JJ 6 0. Um, you know, these are very established players. Thais as well, 3 0, no surprise. And Life Coach, of course, the entire G2 suite. But uh, also Modern Leper, who we're about to see today. I'm happy to see him going 3 0 because he's definitely been in a somewhat turbulent place with Hearthstone recently. Been yeah. kind of upset with the game, so this would be good for him to be going on a good run here. And, also, the other name I want to pick out is uh, Mr. Two Beers of 100 in 10 Arena Challenge Infamy is also 3-0, proving that he's not just now the uh, the Arena Master as he's been given the title of. He's also pretty good at Constructed as well. Absolutely. And uh, at the end of this list, we can see AK Wonder and 32 others, which means that 32 other players also has a score, which is 2-1. Yeah. And they have a chance to still make it. To the, to the day two. Yeah, as we can see, there's Elky, Dog, and Fireback currently sitting in the, you know, those last few spots to in the top 16 at the moment, mm -hmm. and that's due to the tiebreakers all behind the scene working uh, working themselves out. But as we can see, with that many other players at 2-1, the, you know, this bracket is nowhere near even definite yet. There's right. still many more rounds to go, and especially once we get to say like the five twos, like that's going to be very interesting to see where those tiebreakers are coming up because they're going to be a good chunk of players that aren't going to make the cut. Absolutely, I had a discussion with Sixo about. Um, the bracket, well, the bracket overall, the standings uh, after this round. And uh, my approach was that you don't have to worry that much about the standings till round five or six, mm -hmm. because the, the round six is where people can see what's the situation. If you are 5 0, you probably already made it, and like 100% you made it, because even if you lose the last round, you are through. And uh, people who start with 3 0, they sometimes tend to be like a 3 2 after round five, so suddenly they are fighting for their survival. Yeah. And this is where everything happens, like around. Uh, round five, six. But um, six, I was under the impression that, hey, I'm 3 0, and I can go like 2 2 at the very moment right. and still make it. Yeah, I mean, that's the really important thing as well is like, don't fall out of contention early, right? Because even if you go 0 2, sure, you can mathematically get back to a 5 2, which is a qualifying score, but because you lost early, your tiebreakers end up being so much worse. So as long as you hang around, you know. One and two is reasonable early on, but as Sixo said, if you can get out on that streak to 3-0 yeah. now, because your tiebreakers are so good because you've gone 3-0 at the start and you're just playing against strong players for the rest of the Swiss, you can then afford to go two and two from there and be in a much better position than someone who lost early. Definitely, but for the players who are in the tournaments, it's uh, probably better to focus on their own matches at the very moment right. instead of just uh, walking around and asking people like, what's your score, what's your score, like 2-1, oh, I had this match. Like, It's cool to, wa to talk about uh, the matches with the players, but it's better to just take one match at a time, and uh, even if you are at 1-2 uh, at the very moment, you can still finish with a 5-2 and maybe make it. So, Raven, what do you think? Uh, the, the next match, do you know who it's going to be? Yeah, it's going to be Modern Leper versus RDU. So, uh, Modern Leper, uh, you know, you sort of half mentioned him, so uh, he's an ex-teammate of mine and well-known within the UK scene as one of the top players in yep. the UK, actually. Um, but he, he does have a very up-and-down relationship with Hearthstone, as we've discussed, you know. So, uh, so, some days he hates the game, some days he loves it, and that's just the, the kind of guy that he is. But I agree with what Sol said, that uh, having this good of a start will only help him because it will just snowball for him. And, he is against RDU, though, which is uh, the returning champion and definitely one of the powerhouses of Hearthstone at the moment. Yeah, but you know, Modern Leper's a very, very capable player. He's had some reasonable placements in um, some major events already, decent career earnings. So, yeah, he's no slouch himself, definitely of the tier that can put up a challenge here, as being shown by going 3-0 in a bracket this stacked. So, definitely in a good position to move forward here. But, you know, games get very, very serious from now on, especially if you're in that top part of the bracket. Definitely. But also, like, because they are at the top of the bracket, the tiebreaker, as you mentioned, will be really good because whether wins or loses this match, 
will still be a free one guy right. with a really good tiebreaker. Uh, but let's let's talk about the decks, uh, what they brought. Like Modern Emperor is bringing shamans. I believe this is the aggressive shaman we've seen. But uh, there are iterations now. People play different cards. Yeah, it's really um, coming into its own and branching off in various directions. We saw the Chucky Dignitas version that had Dr. Boom in it and the Flame Tongue Totem. More so board oriented in a way that you try to take over the board and then do right. the damage, yeah. Yeah, and we saw um, earlier on today the SK version where they're playing the Pilot Shredder and the Gilblin Stalker, which is a really nice addition that I'm a big fan of as well. So um, people are still refining the deck. It's still a fairly new deck in terms of it just came out when Finley came out in the League of Explorers set. So still a lot of uh, refinement being done to that deck. Yeah, it's kind of funny as well because I was speaking to the guys about the deck uh, just before this match, actually. And uh, they were like, oh, yeah, so basically what happened is like, because they play test a lot with Orange because a lot of them are like ex-teammates as well. They, um, Orange gave them like the initial list, which I think had the Gilbin in. We we're like, yeah, yeah. So we looked at the list and then like we just grouped together and just made it better. And it was just like, I just like that kind of confidence where it's like we got given this cool sort of new variant good list and then you know SK improved it. So we'll see Plot how it goes. Twist. With those. Orange just wanted to troll them with Gilbin Stalker. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, oh, and this it's looks working. good. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's working. Like and there is Rogue from RDU, so uh, we've uh, heard a statement that Rogue is probably the best deck in this tournament overall, and obviously if you can pilot it uh, perfectly, then it will win for you. And uh, it was one of the decks RDU was playing at the last in Summit tournament? Or was uh, no, I'm not sure. No, I think, I think he had just had like Zoo Druid and Agro Paladin or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, that yeah. Was it, yeah. Legendarian was actually piloting Rogue right. and he got yep. to the final yeah. on the back of that Rogue he brought. So this time RDU actually brings the Rogue as well. And uh, what's the situation? of the Rogue in the current metagame? Um, so Rogue right now is in a really good spot, especially in this format, because in this format, there's a couple of factors. One, that it's last hero standing with no ban, so you expect people to bring sweepy decks, you know, mid-rangey aggressive decks that can just sweep 3-0 every time. Um, and also there's a large quantity of just you know, more casual, generally lower ranked, you know, lesser skilled players, let's be honest, in the tournament because it's a big open at a huge convention. Um, and again, they will tend to bring more simplistic decks like Secret Paladin, etc., and just try and, you know, take their edge of curving out well. And what Rogue can do is really pick that sort of, uh, pick all that kind of stuff apart because they don't play, like, honestly on curve. They use preparation and big tempo spells and they kind of can rip that thing apart and not play that game against a druid or a secret paladin and that's why it's so effective in this format and i personally predict it would be like the big deck in the tournament the, the the winner would probably have rogue in their lineup um it seems like it's i think it's the fourth most popular class overall so it seems like a lot of the pros are leaning that way as well all right it seems like uh, rogue is in a very good state and um talking about the players that you mentioned uh, the casual players that are playing mm -hmm. here uh, we have also a lot of semi-pros from UK, so can you guys, like both be, uh, being from UK, tell me through who are the important players, who are the names that maybe the, the general uh, world audience are not familiar with, but uh, you are and we should be. Yeah, sure. So like the one that really stands out which actually is the, the name that's at the very top of the bracket, which is Ness, um, who's a, an ex-teammate of mine as well, you know, you know him just, just as well. Yep. And um, last I series he did really well, yeah, really well, but I think he just... Uh, had a bit of few issues with the pressure when he got to the, like I think he finished top eight, I think off the top of my head. He went out of his group, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, I yeah it was yeah. definitely top, top six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he finished quite high, but I think in the play that we saw from the last few matches of his, he just sort of was really feeling the pressure, playing very defensive when he could have been more aggressive. So definitely a good player. Again, anyone who's 3-0 at the moment is doing pretty well, and we'll see how he can do this round. But I just think maybe well, hopefully he's learned from his previous experience and he can just relax a little bit more and just see the plays a bit more openly but there's a there's mainly for, for me like modern leper him and ball control are the ones that really stand out all right uh, but just to add to those names i guess um anakin and pesty are the other two that deserve mentioning anakin uh was the winner of the dignitas player search in the uk to pick up a new player for the dignitas hearthstone team and uh pesty kind of gained some notoriety during the documentary that was filmed for that as well because uh, he made it to the top four that was played out at um, DreamHack London, uh, where Anakin and a couple of other players and Pesty turned up. And Pesty had this glorious quote to a BBC camera where he just stops and he just, he just started looking into the camera and just says, yeah, I mean, I'm going to win because I'm clearly the best player here. It's, like, that's just glorious confidence <laughs> and you have to respect that from the man. But yeah, we have a lot of solid players in the UK, but generally people who are just grinding out behind the scenes trying to get their big break. And the man you mentioned saw uh, two beers. Yes. Who is he? Uh, so Two Beers is a guy who got his start in uh, Meltdown Berlin, which is the same place that, say, Faramir and Sixo got started in Hearthstone as well. 
Uh, he got second place in a online tournament that I cast called uh, HS Arena. Okay. Um, but recently, he's really exploded in popularity because he became the first man to complete a Mars's 110 Arena Challenge, which he did not really as a big arena player. He just sort of started playing arena on a whim on stream one day, was doing really well, and then just completely nailed it. So he wow. went from just being a, a, a relatively unknown streamer to eventually streaming this run to like 10,000 people. So. And now he is actually in the top 20, at least, right. of the Swiss. So yep. uh, really good performance. But the game is ready, guys. So let's see what do we have here. Druid versus Warlock. Yeah, and uh, Living Roots into Wild Growth with that coin Druid of the Claw for RDU. So that is a pretty solid looking start for him. Modern Leopard just going to go ahead and keep that Dark Peddler. Gets Sea Giant a little bit too early, but having Dark Peddler in your opening hand is Zoo. It just, it's almost an early game curve on its own, right? Yeah, exactly. So what it can do is, at worst, you can Dark Peddler turn two and then tap something, right? right? You know, at the very worst, at the best, you get something like Flame Him, yep. and you already have more drops to go on turn two anyway, uh, turn three, sorry, anyway. But as you said, I was just about to say, Model has got a good matchup here with Zoo versus Druid. It's generally seen as very favored for the Zoo. But when the Druid has an opening like this, and then just drawn into Innovate, things could go a little bit crazy here for RDU. And the combination of that with Model Epic getting a Sea Giant, which in this matchup isn't as powerful because your opponent generally doesn't build up a big board as Druid, he could be struggling just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like, looking at this uh, the hands of both players when uh, you said good matchup for Zoo, and uh, I believe it's still an okay matchup for Zoo, mm -hmm. but uh, you saw mentioned that it's actually pretty even, and looking at those hands, like, we might actually see a very fast game from the Druid side where he has everything he needs to deal with the Zoo, like, even Big Game Hunter already in hand for the Sea Giant. Right, and it's, uh, it's this horrible thing about Druid where they, they have this part of their deck with like wild growth into big beefy mid-range minions every turn that just beats up on the control decks. Then they also have this part of this deck which is just like living roots and innovate keeper and wraths and swipes that can fight back against these, these bo um, board spamming decks early. And they, just, they always seem to get the right half <laughs> in the right matchups. I don't know how they do that, but... They mulligan. Oh, is that it? Okay, that's what I've been doing wrong this whole time, damn. <laughs> what, you've just been cl clicking OK? These yeah. are the three cards I've got? Sure. What I'll is Mulligan? <laughs> but this is really interesting, though, because although the Innovate allows him to bring out this Druid of Claw really early, which is huge, um, drawing the second Innovate actually doesn't look too great anymore. It does make whatever he draws almost guaranteed to be able to be played, yeah. but now he, he, he kind of needs, like, Wrath, a swipe, you know, just some sort of on-demand removal instead of playing a minion and hoping it doesn't get answered, because he can now use the power of Whelming, and what's so good about this is he pushes the four... Uh, sorry, he can kill the Druid of the Claw, but he still has an abusive sergeant for that egg, so right. it's not like he's using the thing he's going to... his plan on proccing the egg with to, to deal with this Druid of the Claw. Yeah. That, that Druid of the Claw got innovated out and dealt with instantly. Yeah, you're, you're worst right. Worst case scenario. You're right, Raven. That second innovate's terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's so bad. Like, it what means whatever he draws, he can yes. probably play. But de like dealing with the Druid of the Claw in one turn is actually really good for Mother. Well, yeah, yeah. it's a point I wanted to make when you started, but you made it yourself. It's like, sure, the Innovate isn't great right now, but it means pretty much any card that comes off the top yeah. of his deck. And then you is just switched it around to make me look bad. <laughs> hey, that's what I do, buddy. <laughs> nice work. Nice work. Yep. Yep. I'm impressed. Looking at the Modern Leopard, by the way, it's. Uh, from his perspective, how does he feel? Like, he dealt with one of a claw. Oh! <laughs> Pretty okay now. Now, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And he has mana to do all of it. So, um, I guess this is a pretty straightforward turn. You just uh, PO abusive, kill the 4 6, um, slam an egg. He's probably just going over his mind whether he should tap instead of play the egg. Because the egg seems like super obvious. You can play all the cards, get the work done, but. What's he do next turn? Yes. Like he has a Sea Giant, and he, that, you know, he might not have the minions to be able to play it on the mana, depending on the situation. Fair point. So he might want to tap just to get into something more playable next turn. But I think either play is actually pretty okay at the moment. I don't really know which one I like I more. I think it's also like, this is the second abusive and the second PO. Yeah. So what else is there in the deck? Like double Defender of Argus, possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe Dark Iron. But Imp Gangboss is one, one of the cards you probably yeah. want pretty soon as well. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, like, extending that argument, you kind of feel okay drawing something naturally to play next turn because, as you've just said, the abusives are gone, the power overwhelmings are gone. Yeah. So most things in your deck now are just dudes that you can play on the board, which is what you want next turn at this point. Also, it's a minion, so in a way it works with the Sea Giant in hand. So yeah. you want to play Sea Giant as early as possible, hoping that there will be no big hunter for it. Little right. does he know, though. 
What's kind of weird as well is now, if you look at the hand from RDU, because the Druid of the Claws and the Innovates got like dealt with so easily, like they were not supposed to go down that easily. It's ridiculous. Right. Um, like Modlap is in such a good position now because even forget, imagine the Sea Giant, his hand doesn't even exist. Yeah. Then like, well, he's probably going to draw a menu you can play. If it's something like a gang boss, he can tap as well. And he should just snowball, and RDU's got nothing. Even Doomguard, he just slammed Doomguard and ignored the Sea Giant. Oh, imagine if BGH was played. It's tempo. <laughs> How would that, oh my god. Tempo BGH so and the right. Giant after. Yeah. But yeah, there wasn't even like a good Savage Raw turn there from yeah. RDU. He was just kind of forced to Wild Growth Hero Power, and now he just needs to look for some initiative off the top of his deck, or at least uh, you know, a swipe or something he can use reactively to clear this board. But Modern Leper, the, the boom draw was a bit of a whiff, but it's getting to the point where that boom can be pretty crushing. And having two big game Hunter targets in his hand now is pretty useful, considering the big game Hunter is there in his opponent's hand. Yeah, yeah. what's pretty good about this is this low Theb is going to proc the ability to play the Sea Giant anyway. And uh, even though it's a BGH, we can forget about that for a second because he didn't have the mana to do anything else to kill any of the minions. So this is kind of huge. And then he has Giant into, well, he can creep Free now. Creeper, into, woo! <laughs> yeah, creeper into Giant, and then after the BGH, he just plays Boom. And then what, the Druid's on two cards. Yeah, what can Druid even do? Like, Big Game Hunter is definitely there specifically for a big uh, for Dr. Boom in most of the matchups. I think the Big Game Hunter's definitely there for the big game. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Yeah, he's there for big game. I don't know, there's something about Sea Giant plays that just hits me right in the value. Like, when he drew that two drop, it's like, that's a free Haunted Creeper! He just gets to play it, it's so awesome! <laughs> just discount your, your Sea Giant. Just playing one drops for free, because you, they've got a Sea Giant in your hand, it's so good. Yeah, and this is crazy, actually. So the Ancient of Law, if you just look at RDU's hand and forget about everything else, looks perfect. Right. But yeah, well, he just has to play Big Game Hunter here. Yeah. And then the, the low third, he can kill off kill the 4-4 with four, it. Yeah. But then the Creeper just kills it anyway. Your Flame Imp's still alive, the Egg's still alive. And when there's the follow-up of Dr. Boom, like right. this is looking really rough for out of you. And this is exactly what I was saying about you know, having the two Big Game Hunter targets in your hand, where there was this big arms race when Dr. Boom first came out and everyone started playing Big Game Hunter. Of then people tried to put more Big Game Hunter targets in their deck to overload the BGH, and then double BGH became a thing. Yeah. And it's about having this, this swing back of like once the big game hunters had the swing, you have more threats to keep going, and the threats don't get much bigger than Doctor Boom. Yep, that's absolutely true. And uh, now Modern Leopard has a really good board. Can Swipe solve it? Swipe would be able to solve it quite nicely. Unfortunately, no Swipe for you. Yep. Yeah, so I imagine this is to draw cards. Yeah, just healing. Healing wasn't really going to get anything done, but no uh, cards picked up. Both innovates already used, which drastically reduced his ability to do anything immediately. And now there's just so much damage facing him down here. And then there's that two mana gain a power overwhelming card that we're probably going to see come down. Oh, Defender Vargas now with the egg. I mean, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, it's quite good to, to lock the Druid because next turn is nine mana, so possible Savage for a Force of Nature. Yeah, I think you still go for Dark Peddler first yeah. here because potentially Power Overwhelming might be good enough to convince you not to play Defender of Argus this turn. Um, none of these cards are quite Power Overwhelming tier right now. Well, great. Not this boy at least has charge. That's true, yeah. Takes the Corruption, wow. But what's he going to do with the rest of his mana now? Looks like he's going to trade off a Boombot, so I guess he's freeing up space for that Argus. Wait. Well, the Corruption's actually a really interesting pick there. Cause he, hang on, he's on 7, 8. 8, 10, 12, one off. Yeah, so he needs to hit with his boom box to face, right? Yeah. And he has lethal. For two? Maybe that's why he picked the corruption. I just feel he doesn't need it. Just because, so so back to my corruption point. Yeah. Um, like, at this point, the Argus does help, but um, I feel like if you want to leave a minion up against Druid when combo can just kill you anyway, will the corruption get enough done versus like, Stone Tusk Boar is one damage. You know, Actually, right. they put him so Stone low. Like, Stone Tusk Boar was, was Stone Tusk Boar lethal? No, it wasn't, because he will have not have mana for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, look at this, like Stone Tusk Ball could actually do some work. But <laughs> the Corruption, I just think it's very late in the game. Like, it is a Corruption, then wait a turn for a minion yeah. to die. Yeah. Can I actually do anything? I actually kind of agree with you. You're at the point in the game where maybe just one burst from hand might have been the difference. Like, he was so far ahead, but you know, yeah. maybe something magical happens with Drake Swipe and you lose your whole board. And then yeah. that, you know, that one damage with the power overwhelming is what you need. Yeah. So it makes sense. All right, still a uh, pretty good game from Modern Leper. Just taking that matchup, which... Uh, it looked uh, a bit weird in a way that there was the Wild Grove, double Innervate, double Dread of the Claw, and still Zoo was able to just 
Uh, take control of the board. What was missing? Swipe was missing? Uh, I don't think it's what was missing. It's just power overwhelming is a hell of a card, Nim. She yeah. gets stuff done. Just two Druid of the Claws answered immediately by two power overwhelmings, one of which left a 4-4 on the board from the egg. Uh, kind of swings just too hard for Druid to deal with, and he just snowballed for it behind in the game after that. Yeah, you've got to think, if one of those Druid of the Claws, especially the first one, lasted just one turn extra, yeah. it would be insane, because then you snowball him for the second one, and then the, the zoo's always behind. But because he could just deal with it straight away, like you said, it was just easy from there. And, you know, Modlab is going to be pretty happy, because zoo's a very uh, flexible deck, and Absolutely. can almost snipe a win off anything. So to queue into it again, you know, like the last hero standing format kicks in here, where he queues into it again, and we did see, uh, even versus Rogue, I think it's still pretty OK. That's the beauty of last year's standing, you just eliminated the Druid. Druid is not coming <laughs> back. You know, like, Ever. hey, this matchup, I will not have to face Druid anymore. I can yep. stay with my deck that I played really well and it worked for me. Right. In Conquest, you win game one against a Druid and you think, oh, that Druid's going to come back and get a win at yeah. some point. But now it's just job done. Druid is gone. You know, I've just still got my Zoo deck still powering through. And like you said, Raven, although Rogue is a, a matchup that a lot of Rogue players really like against Zoo, it's definitely fine for the Zoo player if you yeah. get the right combination of stuff early. And I think <laughs> you actually got the good combination of cards. And here. I think Modern Leper likes drawing Abusive Sergeant and P.O.s, as we saw from the last game. He's just uh, it works. done it again. Especially with per when paired with the Nerubian Egg. And uh, the, the very important thing is Coin as well. Because this matchup, there's a lot of discussion like who is favored. And the Rogue is favored a bit when they get a coin. But if yep. they don't get a coin, that might get tricky. Yeah, I think Rogue in general, their matchups are more affected by coin or no coin than any other class in the game. Maybe only like Tempo Mage comes close. But yeah, it's just a card like Rogue, Rogue Oil Rogue, Miracle Rogue, any of these archetypes, they would probably play the coin as a card in their deck if yeah. they could. Uh, it's just that good for their strategy. Two of them even. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's really funny as well when like, a lot, you know, like Model Epic's probably sat there thinking, okay, I'm on coin. This is really good. Not because I've got the coin, but because my opponent hasn't. Yes. <laughs> More than anything. Like, he's just like, I can play without coin. It's fine. But as long as he doesn't have it, it's okay. Absolutely right. Oh, wow. Interesting. Do you, do you go for the Dire Wolf Alpha here? An easy kill? I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it a lot too. Um, I think you chose to play his Blood Mage there just to cycle his hand a little bit and get something on the board, which is uh, interesting over developing a dagger. Um, a lot of Rogue players I know feel like turn two dagger is almost always correct just because it builds such a great platform going forward. And looking at RDU's hand, you know, I think he has a decent amount of options in there before he cycled. So it'd be interesting what his thinking was with the Blood Mage there. Yeah, yeah that was I think RDU is actually just one prep away from, from being a, a very, very scary hand. It's like right. I turned something along the lines of like Violet Teacher prep uh, fan of knives can be very scary. Maybe not on this board specifically, but in general. It's scary. Now we have a problem though, because there is the power of overwhelming. So this SI7 didn't do anything almost. Like two damage to face doesn't matter at this point of the game. And Knife Juggler is the perfect draw to go with the Power Overwhelming. He might have been forced to do something slightly awkward, like Power Overwhelming Abusive Sergeant, or maybe just double Abusive and hold on to the Power Overwhelming just to get a bigger board. But Knife Juggler Power Overwhelming is pretty dreamy here for Modern Leper. Especially after you've just seen a Backstab right. as well, and an SI7 agent. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they're, they're the two easy removals for a, yeah. a two health minion. Nice sources of two damage, bro. <laughs> Here's my Knife Juggler. That's why we come back a bit to this this Falnus being played on turn two. Sure. Because not only was no weapon, but Falnus is quite good for turn five if he paired with Fun of Knives yep. to deal with uh, two health minions. But then the RDU uh, possibly thought that he needs more cards. He needs to cycle this Falnus uh, much more than just... Uh, yeah, it's just interesting because looking at his hand at that point, he had a backstab, he had an SI agent, he had a fan of knives, and he had a violet teacher. Like, I'd say that's a pretty solid hand against yeah. Zoo. So the, the Blood Mage decision was, was for sure interesting, but it started to, to snowball based off that and the implosion draw. That's an interesting it's card. It's tempting, right? With juggler on board, right? Do you ever not go for it, in a, like, honestly? I think in a lot of worlds you don't go for it, really? yeah. I mean, there's everything else just feels terrible. That's the problem. Uh, I mean, the abusive sergeant seems fine. And the last hit is This is huge. I mean, yes. yeah, like, th th it's a risk, right? And I think yeah. I, I would have thought really hard about it and ended up making this play anyway, but the possible benefit you get from it is so small because you have to trade one of your minions at the end anyway. And he's forced to trade this way to play around Fan of Knives precisely. He can't just, like, send the 4-4 into it yeah. for the value yeah. trade. So would you prefer to, like, life tap and then abusive I think I think I would have ended up doing the implosion anyway but I would have thought longer about it than maybe Leper did there it's probably the best implosion you can get versus rogue right overall, specifically because there's a juggler on board in here like. well that's it it's so hard to pass up an implosion with juggler on the board I think that's the real issue but 
Model Leopard does draw into the flame imp. He gets to get a free tap. And you know what? Void Walk is pretty decent against Rogue as well. So uh, that's going to feel pretty okay. Yeah, it looks do, I mean, do you just great. play flame imp, Void Walker, and abusive? <laughs> just, I think so. Because why not? You put the pressure on, and you've just seen Fan of Knives as well. So yeah, that's not going to help. Exactly. Having just seen a Fan of Knives, yeah. hiding your abusive sergeant behind a taunt is so good here because you can start digging in for that two damage. And um, again, this is where having Blood Mage in your hand, say there was a Blade Flurry right now, sure, it wouldn't be perfect, but if he had the spell damage to go with it, it would at least get something done. Deadly, po Deadly Poison can at least start fighting back against this board, but so much damage ramped up in hand here for Modern Leffer with six more from hand if at least one minion sticks on board. Yeah, it's basically 15 damage overall, right? Um, if you take Void, Void Walker, like 16 with Void Walker, is it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's prep though, so he does have more options next turn. He can. Uh, he, he can prep sprint at least turn. to draw, but I, I was wondering whether you actually play teacher and then um, and then poison to be able to just at right. least summon an additional token because the Drake cycle, but you've actually got a lot of cycle already in your hand, even though they are in the form of seven mana sprints. But you know, everything that dies to uh, the Drake here dies to the Violet Teacher anyway, and you get one more token on board. Yeah, I don't know how much value the one one has in that situation. Would like be, my, be my comment on that, and yeah. I guess he just does feel desperate, like needs Blade Flurry specifically to yeah, win this yeah. game, probably. I was just about to say, there was a ton of lethal draws that turn, and Lothar, while not being technically lethal, the delayed lethal. is pretty <laughs> much lethal. Yeah, yeah. He feels lethal. <laughs> Definitely. It's okay, he's got Dr. Boom. Uh, Boom oh. solves everything. Yeah. yeah. Best play. Nice. Modern Leper going to a 2-0 lead here, con continuing his rampage through this tournament. And then the last deck for RDU is Paladin, and uh, if it's uh, a secret Paladin, then it should be a good matchup for Zoo as well. Yeah, I think most people have come down on that side now. It was a really hotly debated matchup yeah. early on as to who wins it. I think, you know, Paladin needs to do the big minion cog hammer hit face plan. Like, that's one of the big ways they can win. I think Paladin, weirdly enough, ends up being the aggressor in the matchup, whereas Zoo controls the board. Um, but yeah, I think most people have come down and it being a pretty favorable matchup. I think there's overall. one person who still thinks that Paladin is a, b a good matchup here. Like, that's already you. Okay. He was, he was arguing with us, Kaka. I think they even had like matches to decide who is better in that matchup, Paladin or Zoo. Where right. Kaka said, yep, Zoo is obviously favored. And already was like, no, Paladin is better. So I think this this might be the ultimate test for it. I think as well, one of the, the key cards, other than doing that tactic, of course, versus Zoo for the Paladin, if the Paladin can get off a Consecrate, because yeah. that's something Zoo does not have access to, is AoE. Yeah. If a Paladin gets one good Consecrate off, they can just win off the back of that and the momentum that gains by just clearing up a board. The question is, can they win without Consecrate? Yeah, I think, I think they still can do it. I just think Consecrate's like, one of the super important cards. It's possible. I mean, if they go minion for minion early, you know, if they both have similar draws, then the Paladin minions are just better. Like, that's just kind of the criticism of this deck as a whole, Secret Paladin. But the problem is, is Zoo is so much more consistent at getting a strong combination of early minions. So on average, the Paladin just gets swarmed by Zoo early on. Yeah, and if it goes late game, you know what? Zoo can tap. And uh, Paladin normally has issues late game in terms of, you know, they're, they're just top decking cards that are like like Secret Keeper or a Creeper right. or even a mini bot late game, although he's okay, he's not good when your opponent's playing two to three minions yep. instead. Like, that can be the issue to run into. And looking at Modern Leopard's hand again, other than Little Leroy, I'd say, I think the, the rest of the open hand feels pretty okay. Yeah, it's definitely fine with uh, with the Void Walkers and the Knife Juggler. The Leroy, by the way, we haven't seen him uh, in the last two games, but then the fact that he's playing Sea Giant would tell you that there is a possibility of Leroy in the deck. Yeah, the Leroy Sea Giant version is, again, Zoo is just kind of splintering off in various directions now. I've actually seen a lot of Void Cooler Malganis in this zoo, so in, in this tournament yeah. from Zoo so far. Um, but then there's the really fast Zoo that plays Doom Guards, tops out of five. And then there's this version as well that's come out newly with uh, Sea Giants and Leroy. Drop the Doom Guards in your, from the, your deck because you have those situational cards like Leroy and Sea Giant that you don't want stuck in your hand getting discarded by Doom Guards. And then there's even crossover cards like uh, Enhanced Summer Cano, right. uh, Gormark isn't something right. that everyone plays. I personally like it, but you know, definitely just a lot of choice in Zoo, which is why I like the deck so much myself. And people, actually are, do a saying, lot with it. people are saying the metagame is stale. We have four they different just play Zoo. <laughs> four different play the 18 different variations of Zoo and you'll be fine. Yes, this is an interesting decision here from, from RDU. It seems pretty obvious just to play the, uh, the mini bot here, but He's uh, definitely considering the merits of that Noble Sacrifice just to buff up his Secret Keeper, but I love Modern Leper's line here of coining out both um, of these Void Walkers because what it means is if there is a secret play from RDU, 
say, exactly that Noble Sacrifice that we see there. He yeah. has one spare minion to proc it, and then he can still buff the second minion with his... Yeah, and he can oh. pretty much deal with any secret that right. comes out. Oh, if it's Avenge, obviously ignore it. Yeah. I actually do like the Minibot here. I think I would like the Noble Sacrifice if he had Muster for Battle, sure. because then the weapon of, from Muster for Battle kills the 1-1 one -one that's yeah. left. But because he doesn't, I think it's better to just get the Divine Shield on the board. At the moment, you don't have a turn three play, so it looks like you might actually play Noble Sacrifice Hail Power next turn. Definitely. Right. And now for Modern Leper, is it safe enough to play the Knife Juggler and just kill the Secret Keeper with uh, two of the Void Walkers? Yeah, seems good. And, um, Muster for Battle wouldn't punish this. Cold Hammer wouldn't punish this. There's, and it's there's too, no coin it's for It's too early yeah. for Consecration, yeah. So this seems like a really safe point to get out a Knife Juggler. And if, if that thing sticks around for a turn or two for that implosion, then... Uh, some sparks are going to fly here, especially with no Consecrate in the hand for RDU. We don't even know if he has one in a deck. Yep. So, um... Wow. <laughs> <coughs> well, Legendarian is now 2-2. I'm just going to... Yeah, that. okay. That's that's the important part yeah. of that. Legendarian is now 2-2. Moving swiftly on to this game of Hearthstone. There is a Knife Juggler and Noble Sacrifice in the hand from RDU. I don't really see any play that happens this turn that doesn't involve those things. Yeah, it's quite an okay play for now. And obviously just fighting for the board with the small minions, nobody going for face. It's all about the trading for now. The Ruby Leg is quite oh. nice. It's a minion that he can play combined with the Abuse of Surgeons. Yeah, it's kind of awkward though, because I don't think there's any good way to trade into both of these minions uh, and, and keep the Juggler alive. What about Abuse of First? And if you hit into the Knife Juggler, you um, actually... Yeah, so... If you hit the you, minion. Right, you abusive first, and then you trade that into whichever minion doesn't get hit, and, and then, then you play the hope, knife yeah. juggler afterwards for a 50-50. And hope. Right. But there is a noble sacrifice in play, which ruins that plan completely, and I'm dumb. <laughs> well, it was yes. from Modern <laughs> Leper's perspective. Yeah, I've, and the thing as well is, this is just like, you know, actually Modern Leper showing that he knows how to play around secrets, right? You don't abuse it first, then try and attack in and hope. Yep. It's probably just worth... The, the payoff isn't good enough in that situation. I've he could <laughs> still abuse it. I think you do, right? Uh, yeah, you... Well, you can hit the free because, one. Because you're going to implosion next turn. That's just almost guaranteed. Right. So you abuse it. At worst, just go five to face and have another juggle, like... The question is, how it important is juggler? Because if there's master for battle, you might yeah. have trouble. Yeah. I always just think with the egg on board, you feel feel pretty okay versus that. Yeah. But Implosion's probably going to be the play next turn, so I like just the abusive in some way. Just get it on the board. Yeah, it makes sense. He doesn't really have mana to commit to using that at any point, but now the uh, the Implosion is going to get some work done this turn, but uh, we're getting to a really nice curve here from... Wow! wow. Oh, okay. Really nice curve here from the Implosion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is a pretty good curve. Hitting yeah. for four on a four health minion, that's the numbers that you Guys, want to be putting together. Let's, okay, it was obviously a great Implosion, by, but what was the reasoning to go for an Implosion on the 3-4? The idea about the 3-4 is any... Because you, you are going to summon Imps, and the Imps kill the 3-1, right? So the, there's no reason to just re take the three damage, and then an Imp will kill it afterwards. So yeah. Whereas if you do hit for four, as we did see, it's a huge payoff versus the risk of not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, RDU does have the Sludge Belcher, which would have punished that line a little bit if it hadn't if it rolled missed, four, yeah. but, you know, all things considered, yeah, it's a pretty win-win situation. Like you said, you get those Imps on board to trade with the 3-1, and if it rolls four, it's such a huge blowout. So it's a calculated risk from Leper. It's one of the things that um, random effects in the game can actually enhance skillful players when they understand how that affects their outs in certain situations. Exactly, yeah. In that situation, although it looks like he just got stupidly lucky, most people wouldn't have even aimed it at the 3-4 in the first place, and I think it was absolutely correct, too. It's just 100% risk management. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, this and now RDU just follows up with Mistress Challenge. <laughs> yeah, no risk at all. So <laughs> no risk at all. Uh, this is really rough, actually, because normally you do want a lot of minions on board to deal with these secrets, but the minions aren't enough. They're all 1-1s, one or at least, or, yeah. you know, other than the, the flaming, but, you know, they're all one-attack minions, and he's just not going to be able to deal with this board unless he risks a tap into, like, power overwhelming or something. Yeah, I was going to say, where's your double power overwhelming now, <laughs> <Yeah>. one lever? <laughs> well, he still possibly has a chance if, uh, well, if he taps into power overwhelming, but... Overall, uh, RU is running out of cards. He only has Secret Keeper and Blessing of Kings. So if Modern Leper somehow deals with this board... Yeah, that's... Oh, he's a, actually going to Leroy. It's a okay. big somehow. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure... He has sure seven health to, to get through yeah. on the Belcher for right. a start. Like, that's exactly. so much. It's such a big somehow, and you don't need too many cards in your hand when you have nearly 20 power in play or whatever and, it is. And so. the problem is, he's used Leroy, give yeah. him the two tokens, and this Comp Spirit's still left. 
Yeah, that's only going to buff them again. So he can clear up some of them, but it's still going to hit pretty hard next turn. What's he going to be? He's going to hit for nine next turn. I like the attack with the Hunter Creeper to ha put more power on board to be able to fight back, having a two, two one ones instead of killing the one, oh! one, one token. One mana off lethal. Yes, indeed. But still with plenty of health to play with, I do expect RDU to just go maximum aggression here. No point messing around sending a 7-7 seven, seven into any of these minions. So... Just jamming phase, taking away life tap as an option from the from the zoo. Not yeah. quite, but you know, putting them down to that total where it's like, okay, I have to make serious issue with tapping right because now. Because of the way the board looks, do you actually for once Blessed of Kings the bigger minion? Because if you Blessed of Kings the two two, I would be Gal. Then like, yeah, but there's only Owl that punishes you. If you if Blessed of Kings the two two, it's a six six, and you already had like five power on board. Sure. So you just Blessed of Kings on the big guy because yeah. there's only the Owl that punishes you. Whereas there's a, so the, many more options. Defender of Argus possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I like this line because he's put his opponent to five. He's taken a safe trade as well on the board, and he's put himself in a situation where if any of these minions live. Plus the four damage from yeah, the Blessing of Kings, he just has lethal. So Absolutely. that's a really nice compromise play from RDU. Finds the optimal line, locks down his victory, and is on the uh, on the comeback train now with Secret Paladin. Yeah, Zeus eliminated, and uh, so is Ecop. Uh, we've seen a uh, information <laughs> that uh, he lost, and uh, he's out of the tournament. So what you're trying to say is Ecop may be in everything, but he's not in this anymore. Yeah, yeah. He was in this tournament, but he is not right. there tomorrow. Uh, enough, but yeah, I mean, RDU does have an uphill struggle against him, but uh, Secret Paladin against Druid, he'll be fine with. It's definitely a very, very winnable matchup for the Secret Paladin. But uh, Face Shaman is a, a, a different proposition. Face Shaman definitely a, a deck that was put together to do well against this deck. But uh, since that happened, Secret Paladin has become more refined as well, and the matchup isn't quite as bad as it used to be. But that's the matchup we're going to see: Secret Paladin versus Face Shaman. Triple three drop, not the opening hand that Leper's looking for. Going first, he needs to nail down that one drop. That's first and foremost. Yeah, so Modern Leper is going for a good matchup to start things off, and uh, we'll see if it works. Like I've seen Paladin win that matchup as well. It's not 100% yep. win. Right again, Coghammer, massive. Yeah, Co Coghammer can actually just win you that game. But as you said, like, quite rightly, he needs a one drop purely because if you miss the one drop, then your opponent coins mini bot. You're in some serious trouble. Yeah. <sighs> I well, he did miss the one drop, as far as I can see. Could uh, still draw. Oh no, he has drawn into it. There's no mini ball as well for RDU, but he has play still. Like you can even just juggler this turn, or do you hunt a creeper? Uh, so the problem with the the juggler wouldn't trade effectively into a totem golem but it would be more effective against some other minions obviously like traditional reasoning would say you play the creeper first and then you leverage the tokens off the yeah. juggler but uh, rdu is just going for the gusto here going to try and get the the strongest start as possible and put the pressure on early and cockham is a really nice draw here if he's able to curve out yeah do you, do you actually go second juggler at this point ah uh, it's, it's a, a tough one because you're just trying to guarantee that one lives and then you can keep uh, f follow up with say the avenge and the creep in the next turn i think the hornet creep is okay here because you kind of just want something obnoxious to stick to the board to give yourself the option of playing cog hammer next turn so you want to make your board as sticky as possible um, i'm not sure like what world two three twos die to that board from face shaman but i can definitely understand the merit of getting the creeper in play yeah definitely i think like what, what if there is like a juggler so you play, there is a Hunter Creeper on board. You play a second juggler. Hunter Creeper is still not popped. The attack face. Your opponent plays a juggler. And maybe. But still, that's all of his mana, right? Abusive? So it's no, it could be. It's free mana. Right. Oh, yeah, it's so a juggler abusive, sure. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to give himself the option of the cog hammer here, I think is the big thing. He has he, he has an option to play you know, knife juggler and avenge here if he wants to, and that doesn't look too terrible considering he'll be able to get some knives out of the Hornet creeper. But just making sure when you have cog hammer in your hand, like cog hammer on turn three is so destructive in yeah. a lot of situations. So. Absolutely, I think like the avenge and the juggler is a bit better though this turn because you're able to kill at least the two one and still uh, force your opponent to trade into the juggler. Like if you leave the juggler alone, alone on board, you'll be in trouble. And this is exactly what RDU wants, just uh, tie in Modern Leper into the, the minion fight. Uh, he's not taking any face damage. Modern Leper is, uh, has to spend the minions here to fight back. Right, like as long as Shaman is behind on the board in the first three or four turns, you're kind of uh, delaying the inevitable to the point where they do have to establish that point. They can't just burn you to the face from turn one. It's not the way the deck works. They they need to get board dominance for at least a couple of turns to force some minion pressure through and then back that up with burn spells or doom hammer. So as long as you can get ahead, you buy yourself so many turns against this deck to just fight for the board.
And now a question to Raven. Uh, are you playing Lady Liadrin? Do you think he actually got to level 20 himself? Yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. Are you trying to insinuate that he would get someone else to play on his account for him, Minj? No. <laughs> uh, the story is he actually asked a friend to boost him. Oh, 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 oh you're boosting perfect him, right. Legal. Oh, okay. But I thought you meant he got someone else to play his account. I was like, of course, Adi, you didn't do that. <laughs> but, but yeah, of course, like you could get someone to boost you in levels, why not? Yeah, it's absolutely legal, but then like you, you do miss out the, the experience. You cannot roleplay. <laughs> right, Solo? <laughs> I was gonna, we both so just turned to Solo and be like, go. Sorry, were you guys talking? I tuned out for a oh, second. Okay. Uh, my bad. Um, so, Coghammer comes down and is a very, very effective tool this turn. It's going to allow him to once again maintain pressure on the board. Uh, Looks like he swung in. Okay, is he going face then? He must be going face. Or yeah, that, yeah. Would... Unless that attack is strictly wrong. So. It is It is a race in a sense. Like, yeah. You want to push uh, Shaman, uh, to put Shaman in a position where he has to defend himself. Right. Which is basically what Shaman does not do. I guess in that situation, he wanted to take his shot at the knife as well, but he could have guaranteed the full clear and taken less damage, but I guess the, the matter of a small amount of damage isn't a big deal compared to the knife and keeping the Divine Shield, so that ordering actually ends so, up being so fine. Would, would you have attacked with the Divine Shield or before the Divine Shield to kill the 1-1? One because one? before the Divine Shield opens him up to an Earth Shark, right? Right. Um, but I mean, like that ordering just ends up being fine because of the knife that gets thrown. Like it's just a matter of taking one extra damage on your face. Yeah. So the fact you get the opportunity to just clear the one-one with the knife makes it well worth it in the end, I think. So what do you actually think about Shredder in this deck? Because it's one of the uh, newer additions. It's not something I've tried, honestly. Um, I've seen it today and been unimpressed with it from the one game sample size <laughs> that I saw it in. Because so it's bad. It got stuck in hand, but there was a, there was an opportunity for him to play it, Martin Creek, in the game that we saw. I think and, um, it's. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the reasoning behind it. Shredder's just a good card. This is a more minion-based deck now when you're playing Creepers and yeah. uh, Creepers and Flame Tongues and uh, Knife Jugglers. So it makes some sense, but um, I'm still uh, waiting to be impressed by it. Let's I think it it's way. similar to, to where Sixo started adding Shredder to a Face Hunter deck. Mm -hmm. And suddenly Shredder was this, like, you do want to rush in the very beginning, and then you have this meaty minion in the middle that can actually help you to, to win board and uh, deal some extra damage, and then you follow up with spells and with the burst. So right. I think Shredder, definitely, even though it, it seems a bit weird, it has a place in this deck, um, depending on the style that you play. But by the way, Ignite is 4-0 at the very moment. Yep, sorry, got distracted by a sheep. <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw Ignite and Ness as well, going 4-0 so, yeah. so far in the Swiss. So again, like really impressive play from him. UK represent. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I keep having conversations with Ness. There was a moment where uh, I, when he went from just being completely unknown, even in the UK, to yeah. doing well at Insomnia. Yeah. So I haven't had a conversation with Ness like, Ness, are you actually good at this game? <laughs> like, I didn't wow. know. I didn't know this. So you're actually good at Hearthstone. Good He's job. Like, Subtle noticed me. Yeah. <laughs> Subtle senpai. So this is looking pretty rough. It's looking like and the, uh, the concede right. play kind of proves that point. So um, Model Epi now, it's all 2-2, two -two and uh, this is going to feel a little bit scary for Model Epi. I think we've all been in the position where we've gone 2-0 up and think, I, I just have to have this, right? You know, 2-0 up, I've got like another three games I could potentially, like, I could drop a couple and then win one still. Yep. So, so much variance in just being able to get just one more game out, and now it's just in that scary moment, and he is playing against RDU, who's also pretty good at the game. Also, especially because he took the better matchup first, so he had a better matchup with Shaman versus Paladin, he took that deck, and he lost. So now he ends up in a, in a bit of a worse matchup, Druid versus Shaman, but uh, this is still a matchup that can be won, and we've seen that in the past. Yep, there's a, a certain card that has a pretty big impact on bad matchups, and Modern Leper is looking at it right now. Immediately discards the rest of his hand. He's going to be looking for a pretty much that, <laughs> yeah. actually. He's going to be looking for those four cards. He literally in just picked the cards out of the deck he yeah. wanted. Seems good. Yeah, it seems really good. Wild Grove into Coin Innervate. It actually just innervates Poison. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Big Game Hunter is a bit of a whiff. I guess Living Roots on turn one as well was a bit too much to ask, but Modern Leper is in a pretty fan fantastic spot here, but he's going to work out exactly how he wants to play out this hand because although the uh, the early Emperor seems really obvious, he does have some flexibility with how to play this. He can innovate Druid of the Claw out next turn now with this coin while growth if he wants to. Yeah, and also the Secret Keeper, although it doesn't look very threatening as a 1-2, can actually get out of control very quickly. Right. So you need to be... 
Like, if he had a Wrath, I would imagine he would have, like, looked at potentially even just Wrathing it down. Because it can get a bit silly. There's the Living Roots he was waiting for. And um, so I think he's just prepping himself to deal with, like, an on-curve board from Paladin, which I think, actually, the Druid of the Claw does a better job than waiting and then going for Emperor. Because then, you all, although Emperor reduces all your cards down, you're always, like, playing on the back foot there. Do you right. guys like it, by the way? Like, overall, just going for the Druid of the Claw in the uh, early... Wild Grove instead of just uh, slamming Tori's on them. I think so. I think the, the big, the big issue or the big plus with this is that it happens a turn quicker. Yeah. Like waiting until Emperor was a lot of turns of essentially doing nothing. It was past turn one. It was past turn two essentially by casting Wild Growth. Then your Emperor happens, and by that point they can just have this massive board and then just blessing of kings you with a mini bot or whatever. So you know it makes a lot of sense to do it this way. Get a big minion down first, and the the Shredder draw here is really nice just to give him something to do this turn. It's yeah, absolutely massive. Yeah. Nothing else felt good there because right. especially with the secret coming down. If the secret didn't come down, he could have probably just living roots the one two off. And then, uh, you know, attack with the Druid of the Claw and, and seeing that. But this is kind of rough. And Blessing of Kings is similar to the way we saw Power of Overwhelming. So I had to use, uh, probably laughing at this, being able to just destroy this Druid of the Claw is uh, a pretty huge swing to him. He does have another one, but at this point, you just kind of worry that is it enough, especially because the Avenge is still active. Yeah, definitely. So what do you do here? Like, you can deal with the... Uh, shield mini bot, but then avenge or redemption. Like he knows this is not noble sacrifice. He checked for that one. Right. Yeah. This attack's really good because if the avenge goes on the six six, he gets the oh, BGH. Got wow. him. Yeah. BGH. Oh, your Nailed shielded it. Mini bot. <laughs> Are you so mad? Yeah. Are you with the tilt face right there? He can. Uh, Modern leopard can choose to generate some one ones here with the uh, the living roots if he wants to, but. Since he's playing Emperor next turn, that also means he has a zero mana removal yeah. spell left in his hand afterwards, but he is going to value having the 1-1s one on the board right here. Yeah, I like this. I think you just always want multiple tokens, right? You just want multiple minions versus Secret Paladin. Um, so this is going to feel pretty good. And, you know, his next turn was done anyway, so it's similar to what you said, where just getting things a little bit quicker and instead of waiting on the Emperor. Because I think that's something a lot of players actually do that are maybe less experienced. And they go, so it's like, oh, yeah, but if I just Emperor in, like, a turn or two's time, then all the rest of my cards will be good later. And it's like, well, actually, you might just die by that point. So. Well, to be honest, he actually, like, got Pilot Shredder into Druid of a Claw. Yeah. Of a Claw, so. Right. I mean, honestly, cards on the table, I think... I'd be really tempted to have waited for Emperor there myself, but seeing Modern Leper's line and how he developed it, it makes a ton of sense yep. to me to just get stuff on the board a lot quicker. And he is drawing like a <laughs> god right now. Yeah, Ardy will be really upset up here. <laughs> yeah, and especially because this, if this was turn five, it would still be a good draw, but it wouldn't be on curve. Because he can hero power as well, yep. it's so much better. It's yeah, insane. that was four damage from the Shredder, like eight damage overall at the very moment. Yeah. So yeah, Modern Leopard positioning himself pretty great. That Turian is far away still. Mystery Challenger, not really, so possibly Belcher. Yeah, just gotta see what comes out of the Shredder first. And okay, slightly better than Explosive Sheep. Yes. So <laughs> it's an upgrade for Modern Leopard there. He just can't actually get the Crocolis skin. But suddenly Savage Raw looks pretty nice as well. Uh, I think Druid of the Claw Charge and Hero Power is just fine as well. You can push through the Sludge Belcher really clean. Yeah, yeah. Sav Savage Roll for the following turns. Right, right, yeah, right. sorry. Yeah, I think it's fine. Be because he'll have still have a board, right? Cool. So Savage Roll feels pretty good. I and think Thorsten is uh, fine as well because then for the next turn you will have Druid of the Claw and Savage Roll on, on eight. Yep, I buy that yep. too. Yeah, I kind of like dealing with the Belcher this turn though. Why? Um, because if, if another uh, like Kalkama comes out, then the belt should get some more value, just cleaning up the Crocolisk for free and still being a 3-5, so it makes it a little bit more awkward. This is fine. I, w I was going to laugh if after the opening hand, like Thorison just didn't even get played. Mm. Uh, that would have been pretty funny, but it does see it come down and... Uh, like you said, it does open up the Druid of the Claw, Savage Raw next. Yeah, I think Nimsh is actually completely right here because thinking through possible outs for the Paladin player here, I think you just win in every world like against reasonable stuff that you'd expect. So I think developing the Emperor here is actually completely correct from Leper. Yeah. yeah, I suppose as well, like this draws the attack of the Belcher and the weapon into the Emperor. Right. You don't normally want to leave it up, right? So I suppose, yeah, you, yeah, you know, you, you've changed my mind. <laughs> Good it wasn't. Work. It wasn't so hard. It's like <laughs> it, it was just an just Look at Emperor on board. What is wrong yeah. with this? Look at him. He's glorious. He's just there to rule. All right. So it looks like RDU is going to decide that he is going to have to take the value trade here. Only two cards in hand for the Druid. So he's just going to hope that those two cards are the Eight of Clubs and Blue Eyes White Dragon right now, and just go from there. 
but you know they're unfortunately Hearthstone cards, which means that Leper is in a pretty good position Isn't right now. Is still one damage off? Like he can actually kill the Belcher with the hero power after his Savage yeah. because he still has enough yes. mana. Then the one two is actually annoying. And then yeah. <laughs> The one two is very annoying a lot. Four damage has to go into the one two, which means that only thirteen goes face. So I think he's one off, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but one with off swiping hand. Yeah. One it? off is fine. Just yeah. get this damage <laughs> through before Tyrion is yeah. the important thing right here. Make sure you get your melee damage before any more taunts come down, and then swipe will end the game on the following turn. So really well navigated these last few turns in particular, and the opening turn yeah. from Leper to rush out that Druid of the Claw, not getting greedy for the Emperor. Especially with the versus the Paladin, right? Like this kind of Paladin will not lay on hands, and uh, there's nothing like Lothar yeah. passively. The, 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 there's um, pretty much the only heal is uh, the True Silver, and that yeah. just isn't enough. Right, and <laughs> put yourself onto three, and you're like, yes, yeah, still swipe face. Right, and on top of all of that as well, he beats Board Clear plus Lothar because he can still cast the swipe exactly on the yeah. Lothar conditions yeah. as well. So just every world he wins the game here. Yeah, really, really solid play from Mon Leper, actually. Yep. Uh, really impressive, and uh, how do you just, you know, druid things? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's just Model Epper's opening was really strong there with the druid of the claw. I think it's like so one much of the, work. One of the again, key I moments. Think, sorry, Nimch, but just it's just such good recognition. Like if if you like roll back how this game would have gone if he'd have waited for Emperor. Not only would he have not had that Druid Claw on board attacking for a turn, but that Blessing of Kings on the mini bot yeah. would have just happened to the Emperor and he would have been completely blown out of the game. So definitely, I just wanted to point out the turn where. Uh, he was able to, to use Big Game Hunter. Like the, yes. the moment where Ardu had an absolute advantage with shielded mini bots, just uh, being a 6 6 and no way to remove him. The fact that he had that Big Game Hunter in the deck and was able to use it at that, uh, that turn was uh, quite valuable and it's uh, actually swapped the game. So Ardu is like, what? Yeah, Ardu shakes about his it. head, obviously, doesn't feel like there's too much he could have done about it, but. Modern Leper continues his little rampage here, gets the uh, adulation of the live audience here, and 4-0 in a, in a tournament that I know he was considering not even Yeah, he, he actually was only coming at, at the last minute. He just decided to, like, I wasn't going to go, but sure, why not? That was more of the approach, and suddenly it's like, yep, worth. You know, still he's doing pretty well. Still has, like, a chance to not qualify, but he will have to go 0-3, and, like, knowing Modern Leper and knowing this field of players, uh, he just needs to win at least one more, right? Like yep. Four zero, good tiebreaker. He will if if he wins one more match in the next three uh, matches overall, will be a five two in the end of the day. So that should be enough to qualify for top sixteen. Yeah, yeah. And, and some of the players he's beaten now as well, you'd expect to go on to get good tiebreakers themselves, which will then positively affect Modern Leper's tiebreaker. So he's in a really really good yeah. spot overall. Absolutely. And RDU obviously is not out by all means. Like he still has a chance to, to qualify easily if he wins his matches. Uh, this is round four, so three more matches for both of the players versus other opponents. They, they will not face each other, at least today. Like They can face each other maybe tomorrow with the, the group stages, but for today they just need to continue fighting. Yep, and you just saw a flash up on the screen there. The four O's are down to Tice, Super JJ, Modern Leper, Two Beers as well was and one Ignite, of them. And Ignite, I think, And Ignite, well. so yeah. you know, the, the names are really coming together. You can see how Swiss format really does pull the tears apart. Those are all big names. You know, A couple that you might not be too familiar with. Ignite is not a guy that maybe is as well known as all of those and two beers is a guy that's exploded in popularity recently but is obviously a very yeah. very and, and i think as well a lot of it is comes through as the players people like us would know you know like when you we just have a wider range of knowledge uh, on the actual lesson <laughs> no no on the lesser known play come on you would agree with that so so don't do that on, on the lesser known players overall but for us no, those names are particular surprise. Absolutely. Like, if, if one of those guys just wins the tournament today, we'll be like, yep, he had a long time coming, just uh, playing a lot yep. of tournaments, being a great player. But, uh, guys, just give us some time before we prepare the next match for the next round. I think round five, just after that, we don't have any matches planned for you for round four. So just give us 15 minutes, and we'll be back with more Hearts in action for you. 